Hey guys, it's your girl Didi, and you're tuned into the Called Out podcast where it's all things pertaining to Christ. <laughs> so, guys, first and foremost, I just want to start off and just say thank you guys so much for the support. On my first episode, I mean, I never expected so much support. The way you guys are loving it is only by the grace Ooh. of God. That- <laughs> but today, today, we are joined by a special, 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 special guest. By the grace. By the grace. We are here with NK TV Pa. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, today, as you guys can see by the title, you know, we are going to be talking about temptation. And, (laughs) you know, before we actually get into it, I want to actually just explain how this actually topic came up. Like, the title of it is Just a Little More. And you see, let me tell you guys a little, little story time, do you know what I mean? So I'm just here chilling, you know, I mean, it's it's cold, the weather is cold. So I, I want to put on my portable heater. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep it on for a little bit, just a little bit. Mm, mm. Then it hit me just a little more. Hey, mm, this is what mm, we say mm, sometimes mm. Word, word, word. with temptation. Oh, just a little more. Oh, just a little bit more. Oh, just one more time. So it hit me. And today I'm here with a special guest. I'm here with NK by the grace of God. Okay. And we're going to hear share with you guys talk to you guys and hopefully help you guys but yeah guys if you guys are watching this on youtube make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify keep streaming run it up but yeah guys let's get straight into it so nk the first thing i want to kind of i, I want to pray first of all because oh this topic is too crazy oh like i need god to arrest my tongue because hey <laughs> so let's just yeah amen, amen. heavenly father i just want to thank you for the opportunity to minister to your people today oh heavenly father lord i just want to pray that as i minister to your people that you will truly arrest my tongue and speak through me oh god amen. may i decrease and you increase in me lord i pray for a fresh output of your spirit oh heavenly amen. father i rebuke the spirit of pride oh god i pray for boldness oh heavenly father you say when your spirit comes upon us that we'll receive boldness so lord we just want to pray for boldness today oh god in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. the spirit is here amen, <laughs> amen. The, presence of- the presence of god hallelujah okay so i just want to start off by kind of talking about maybe what we struggled with mm-hmm. you don't have to go like fully in depth but like you know share to an extent you know yeah i think me personally i say girls mm. you know probably i say fornication masturbation mm-hmm. you know yeah that's that's been my struggles throughout my years and before i used to get a bit angry and i used to be a bit prideful but by the grace of god that one has gone but right now obviously I'm, i have victory over it in jesus name Amen. but the temptation i've been really you know battling with has been girls and yeah literally mm, okay so with me yeah Woo! God speak for me. So what I struggled with was, you know, masturbation and watching porn. That's actually, I struggled with that for, I would say it started like in year eight. That's when, you know, it was like a thing where people would post these like, you know, pages on Instagram. And so coming to Christ now, it wasn't like, obviously, I just came to Christ and all these desires disappeared. No, in fact, it probably even got worse. Like when I came to Christ, it was stronger, like, Libido, like, like everything. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what? against principalities. Chai. Like, it it was a battle, and it's like with that, I feel like it's also a taboo topic with females, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I always strayed away from kind of talking about it. Like on my social media, like if people was to scroll down, they would see me do kind of TikToks like if you're struggling with, you know, sexual sin, da da. But I wouldn't say like I'm struggling with that. Mm-hmm. I would just be like, if you're struggling with it, here's some Bible verses for it. Mm-hmm. But I would never go because I felt so like this is weird like why do I struggle with this and I feel like in the same way like for me it was kind of prideful like because I didn't want people to see me as old Didi struggled with this but do you know what I want to kind of share the root of temptation like how do you feel like the root of temptation even like with your temptation like how do you feel like it comes to you how it comes to me is like my company Mm. or what I lay my eyes on you feel me the bible says Mm. if you set your eyes on a woman and you think of her in last like you have committed um adultery in it so it's like the root is always what you're looking at or who you're around so you know sometimes i'll be around my ungodly friends or i'm mean, even with christians in it and you know man them sometimes we like to talk about like, hey! we'll dwell in do you get it and then we'll start talking even sometimes just talking about our past and that like what we used to do it can even bring back memories. it's very true and uh, um, as well as that music as well obviously music can be a that's a big well. one you get it because when i'm listening to you 
when I when I've listened to like Caesar, you know, Broken Clockwork. <laughs> You know, you just you, start, you begin to think about the nice times that you had with a girl in a bed alone, you know, or when you're screaming through um, TikTok, you hmm. see the trends of girls shaking their bums. Lord, hey, bless you Lord. upon us. Cat brandus. You know, but yeah, literally, um, I'll say that's the root. So, like, what I was looking mm -hmm. at, um, what I look at, what I listen to, and who am I around. But yeah. Because you know what it is for me, yeah? Like, when I started to do Bible plans, I started to watch sermons on like, you know, masturbation. And, you know, I used to see like, oh my gosh, like this is so deep. Like, you know, it's against your own body. Like, mm -hmm. it's just so deep. It's but, deep. and then I would read Colossians chapter one, verse 13. And it will talk about like, God has given us dominion over, you know, darkness. Like, yeah. so Satan doesn't have hold over us. Like sin doesn't have hold over us. Yeah. But I used to always wonder, why am I still falling into sin? Mm. So I used to keep thinking like, but Didi, like God has actually set you free. Like it says, he who the sun sets free is free indeed isn't it mm -hmm. so i used to think like why am i still falling why do i still have this you know desire but then i, I come to realize that when i actually fall or desire all these things like lustful things it's more time when my spirit man isn't charged like mm -hmm. when i'm getting comfortable because sometimes in your walk with christ you can be like oh yeah do you know what i've prayed for two hours, two hours. this week like do you know what i mean like <laughs> yes. i'm so good and then the whole week you don't spend time with god that's when the enemy will come because the enemy is always looking for a foothold, like, just a place to enter, right? Mm -hmm. So I always found that when I wasn't feeling my spirit, man, this is when the desire, the temptation will come because temptation can come anytime. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you won't fall into that temptation depending on how your spirit man is filled up because yeah. it's Christ in you that yeah. enables you to will and yeah. to do, isn't it? So when your spirit man isn't filled up, Satan knows he's going to come because he knows your, you know, your desires. Like he knows what you like. So I feel like it's also good to pray, God, change my desires. Like may I be transformed. May I be renewed. Even even Jesus said to the disciples, pray lest ye fall into temptation. Mm. So you realize that actually was saying you have to charge up your spirit, man. You have to pray. Like you have to, it has to be a daily thing. The Bible says that if any man desires to follow me, let him pick up, oh! and deny himself and follow me. Do you get it? So it's important that you deny yourself daily of the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, Philippians 2.13, God works on us, giving us the desires to do what pleases him. Amen. So make sure that you're praying for God to give you a different desire. Yeah. You feel me? Because I'm telling you, we wrestle not against blood, I mean, against wrestling flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers and rulers of darkness. So you realize that, Charlie, it's not a matter of like um, what you're doing daily, but what you're not doing daily. Do you get it? How, wow. how many times you're not praying? Do you get it? Because as she's saying, you, you have to charge your spirit, man. You have to. But yeah. Um, why do you think we should stay away from lust? Because I feel like some people just know that, like, oh, it's bad. Like, mm. oh, God says to not do it. But they don't actually know, like, why. Like, they'll just be like, oh, I have to not. But you don't understand, like... You realise that Jezebel represents the spirit of lust. She, she represents the spirit of fornication. Um, she tormented um, Elijah, you feel me? So she represents no peace. When you're fornicating, you, you don't have peace. You don't even feel like going to church. I'm telling you, you don't even feel like reading your Bible. You don't even feel like seeking God. Let's Why? Because it. fornication, lust, all of these things lead to a lack of peace. Mm. Do you get it? it so that's why you should not, in, like, you should not um, give in to um, lust and that because number one, obviously, it's a sin. And number two, like, there will be no peace in your life. It's important to stay away from lust, bro, because otherwise, Charlie, you'll be preaching to other people and you're feeling convicted. Yeah. You be still. You're in church. You're standing up in the pastor's preaching, but you're thinking, ah, yesterday, last week, I was doing this. Why on earth am I standing up? Yeah. Do you get it? Obviously, that shouldn't get you down. But at the same time, sin and lust, Charlie, is peak. It's peak. It's proper. But with what you're saying, yeah, mm -hmm. I even want to talk about, you know, the guilt, the conviction you'll oh, feel she after. Can't really bad, yeah. <laughs> after you do whatever you do. Mm -hmm. But I feel like sometimes is it actually genuine? Because with me, yeah, hey. There was this season, like, when I fell into temptation, mm. I literally got up and I went to the bathroom and I kneeled down and I cried. <laughs> as in, I cried because I felt like, God, I've actually done this to you. Mm. But I cried, but what did I do the next day? Went, did the same thing. So I just, like, I just feel like guilt is not enough. Feeling guilt is not Let enough. Me, I, I remember once I went to um a conference. I mean, people were dropping. I was crying the next week. I fell, I said, mercy. <laughs> I was telling myself, how can I be? The, how can I be the president like two days ago? And I'm here with. I don't even talk too much, but 
But you know, you realize that Second Corinthians seven ten says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, mm. not to be repentant." But the sorrow of the world worketh death. You know, there's different type of sorrow. There's worldly sorrow, and then there's godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is when you know you've done wrong, but you know that there's grace for you to get back up and you know continue in your walk. And then there's worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow is when you're scared that people will find out. Hey. You're scared that you know when you're talking to people you feel convinced it's like yeah. you 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 want to be in a form of godliness yeah. but godly sorrows went okay cool i felt you read the bible you realize that david fell you realize that Noah fell you felt you realize that moses fell yeah. and they still got back up and they were used by god yeah. how many times did peter re reject Je um deny jesus three times charlie there's somebody who preached christ to a a, a, a crowd of people and they were saved yeah. do you get it so godly sorrows went okay cool i've done this but i'm gonna get back up, read my Bible, you know, and build myself up. And then there's worldly sorrow. You're sitting in your bed, you're thinking, oh, I'm no, I'm no longer a Christian. I can't do this. <laughs> I've been there. God, been separated from you. No, 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 no. It's not true. That's what the devil wants you to think. You know, the devil went to Eve and she, he twisted God's word. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Did God really say you should not eat this um, fruit? You shall not. He said you shall not. Um, you shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? The devil comes to you when you're by yourself after you sin. Twist God's word in your head, and you're thinking, "Hey, Charlie, I'm a sinner. I will never overcome it." But you will overcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It's Literally. a preacher. Hey, great. Uh, please, no, do you know what? It's like cool. So I I feel like sometimes when we're saying one last time, one last time, mm. it's actually us being dependent on ourselves mm. and not. Like depending on God, because you feel like just because your, you know, your libido is high and you're cut, feeling like you need to release, it. you're gonna go and do it. But what does God say about that? Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like that means we're actually putting dependency on ourselves and living our life according to what we want. We actually have self control, like it's a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's like exercise that self control. Like you can pray for self control, but God isn't just gonna say here, here's self control. Like He's gonna put you in a situation mm -hmm. where now you have to exercise that self control, and you actually have the spirit, so you actually will be able to do it. But with us just saying one last time, one last time, it, you're just it's going to be repetitive. Charlie. So you need to come to a like a state where you're dependent on God rather than yourself. Literally, like like um Second Timothy three five. Actually, I was talking. I just remember this verse, but I forgot where it was. not it? Mm -hmm. it says having a form of godliness but denying its power. You can realize that you can have a form of godliness. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Like, but you're not you're not living by the power that comes through God. Do you get it? Wow. The power that allows you to overcome yeah. um sin. The Bible says that the mention of Jesus. Every knee shall bow down on earth, above and below. Do you get it? Every single time Jesus laid hands, the devil will flee. Do you get it? The demon said to um, I think somebody who was trying to who was trying to cast out demons, poor I know, Jesus I know, but but you Hey, you but know. oh that's it. deep. That when you're not connected to the source, when you're not connected to Christ, when you're not building a relationship with God that allows you to know your worth in Christ, you just be there and you just be sinning. Nah, you you're thinking that sin has um power over you. It does not at all. He that lives in me is greater than what? He that, that is of the world. Get, so, wow. Charlie, wow. you have to strive with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Man. Even as you were talking about connecting to the source, mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that's so important. And, you know, even when I was, like, praying, I literally had this an analogy, and it was about, like, let's say a phone charger. Mm -hmm. So your phone charger, you could charge it and it's on 100%, right? Mm -hmm. So now when you disconnect the power, like it's slow, it's going to die, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's slowly going mm -hmm. to be going out, it's going to die. Like it's not going to die straight away, but it's going to do that. So now if you say, I'm never going to put in the charger again, it's going to remain dead. Mm -hmm. So it's like with us as Christians, like just because now you feel like you're on fire for God, you've got zeal, you've got everything, doesn't mean now you should disconnect from the source because you're slowly going to start dying, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, because what the wages of sin is it's death, death right so you're actually going to slowly die because now you've stayed disconnected to the source what you don't have the power like you you don't have the power because it philippians 4 13 you know i can do all things through christ who strengthens me he actually gives you the strength so we need to actually stay connected and at the same way we need to charge up the things we need to charge up our spirit man you know and so staying connected to the source is definitely something that's important even you know i learned psalms 119 verse 11 you know your word have i hidden in my heart that i may not sin against thee amen so it's like when you actually have the word in you're connected to the source you're reading your word you're in your word Literally. this is how you know you can overcome these things because even i was saying this like i went to ask do you feel like ever like you know temptation do you feel like it's there forever like or would there be a time where it literally would disappear you know, the Bible says that God will not allow your temptations mm -hmm. to get more than you can handle. Yeah. 
Do you get it? Yeah. As as long as you live in this flesh, you be te- you will be tempted. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus was tempted by the yeah. devil. Do you get yeah. it? The only time that you're able to overcome this is when you're connected to the spirit. Do you get yeah. it? The more you sow in the spirit, the more you're able to overcome that is of the flesh. Yeah. That's why fasting is important. Yeah. Fasting from your phone, yeah. fasting from food, yeah. fasting from certain friends who are talking about ungodly things that will lead you to the things that are not of God. Yeah. Psalms 1 verse 1, you know, blessed is the person that don't, does not walk in a council of sinners nor sit in a seat of the scornful. Yeah. Do you get it? So it's important that you, you know, stay connected to the word of God. Stay connected yeah. to your word. The Bible says, you know, you do err uh, because you do not know the scriptures. Do you get it? You will make mistakes if you do not know the scriptures. Wow. The Bible says that men shall not live by bread alone. By bread alone, but every by word that proceeds out of the, the mouth, mouth of God. God. So you have to live by the word of God. Yeah. And, bro, if you're going to live by the word of God, don't just have the word in you, but you're not actually using it. Do you get it? You have to understand the power of the scriptures. Right. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not from um, eating and drinking, but it's of power. Do you get it? There's power in the kingdom of God. There's power in the word of God. Mm-hmm. And we have the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ. And no, it's not by might, not by power. But by, by the spirit, spirit of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Do you get it? So stay connected to the Holy Spirit, man. Charlie, it's Charlie. serious. Oh. It's serious. Do you know what, yeah? Mm-hmm. I want to like talk about struggling versus living in mm-hmm. it because i feel like there's a difference between you know walking into sin mm. and falling into sin mm-hmm. so people say oh i'm struggling with this i'm struggling with that but they're just making it like hab- habitual sin mm-hmm. so even in first john it talks about whoever makes a practice of sin is of the devil Eesh. like so that's I, I believe that's about habitual sin like mm-hmm. just you're just making a practice of it that that's what you're doing like Mm -hmm. you're not actually struggling with the sin Mm -hmm. but how do we know the difference like between you're actually struggling and then you're just actually just living in it (sighs) you know when you're struggling with it like i said there's god you sorrow and world you sorrow in it like the world you sorrow is when you know you're going to do it the next week do you get it but for now you're saying you know i won't do it again do you get it And and you're saying to yourself maybe i can't overcome this or you're saying to yourself, nah, I don't think I can overcome this. Or you're saying to yourself, ah, let me let, let me let me go here, you know, let me enjoy this. Huh. You know, you're, you're just dibbling and dabbling in it. You're around the sin that you're not meant, you're around the temptation that you know that is begetting to you. But then there's godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is when you're actively doing something about it. Yes. When you're actually praying, when you're actually going to church. Guys, church is so important to your spiritual work, I'm telling you. Because when you're hearing other people's testimonies, it encourages you. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you're hearing people's testimony of how they overcame it, it encourages you and helps you to understand that you can overcome it. But when, do you know what I mean, you're just there, you're saying, you know, I can do this church thing at home. Hey. I want to be a better Christian. I want to overcome not getting drunk. I want to overcome not smoking. I want to overcome not fornicating. Yeah. But then you're not going to church. You're not talking to Christian friends. You're not actively praying. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not finding more about the spirit of the Lord. You're not yeah. finding more about Jesus. Charlie, it will, it will cause you to just live in it rather than try, um, avoiding it and being victorious over it. Oh, wow. You see what you're saying about you're not actively doing something. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes people think even with repenting, mm. it's just saying, okay, God, I'm sorry. But repentance, like with you, you say sorry to God, but you mm-hmm. actually like, now actually actively do something to mm-hmm. turn away from that sin. Repentance is kind of like a, a 100% turn, like you're turning away from it. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, I'm sorry because I feel guilty. Or like you're saying, you know, worldly sorrow. He died so that we can be set free from all this sin, Mm -hmm. smoking, you know, drinking, all of these. Like he died, leave it on the cross, Mm -hmm. you know, leave it on the cross. And it's like, then you also have to see your desires because there's that person that they genuinely want to stop it. But it's like, everything is so hard. That's when you need to actively fast, you know, speak to people, like stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. Make make it make fasting a daily, like a, a weekly, thing, a daily thing. Like make it daily. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Whether it's fasting from your phone, whether it's fasting from food, try and fast as much as possible because you know certain things do not come just except by, by prayer. Uh, you and feel fasting. me? Except by you know prayer and fasting. So some, some you know most of the things, especially um, the things that you know you need to discipline your flesh. The Bible says that, and Paul said, I discipline my flesh daily. So that when I preach to other people, I myself may not be disqualified. Disqualified. Get it. So it's important to discipline your flesh through prayer. Like I said, through you know, just putting your phone aside a couple of times. You feel, I mean, daily reading your Bible. Do you get it? And yeah. the friends, the the company. I'm telling you, bad company corrupts good morals. Is 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 true, bro. Like it will corrupt your character. That's why a lot of people they go to uni. 
and they're gone. You feel me? It's long. Like, it's long. You feel me? Then the next year, by the grace of God, they come back to God. But Charlie, this, you know, the Bible says that um, I've written to you, young men, that you are, sh- you are strong and the word of God abides in you. Mm-hmm. Like, the word of God abides in you. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. You are strong. That's what the Bible is saying. Do you get it? And the Bible said the Bible said we should live by the word of God. Do you get it? So make sure that you know you're just staying in your word and you know abstaining from these things by the yeah. grace. Literally, what you're saying, literally, Paul says, I die daily. I die daily. I die daily. Like, do you know how deep that, that, one, that is? That's deep, you know. I die deep. daily. I die like. daily. And then what you were saying about, you know, if anyone desires to follow me, I have to pick up the cross, deny themselves, you mm-hmm. know, follow me. It's literally we need to realize it's, it's actually a daily thing mm-hmm. like sometimes we want to be like okay yesterday you know i was tempted but i didn't fall so yeah mm-hmm. i'm so cool no today you still need to wake up and deny yourself again because temptation could come like i know there's a scripture in the bible that talks about when a demon leaves you you know it goes and and yeah it seven will people. yeah it will seven go four. and look for a place to to, to live in right mm-hmm. and then now it sees that there's a place in you that's empty there's a place in you that there's like a little curve to like swerve in it comes with seven more and that's even more so it's like when you fall into the temptation, don't allow the enemy to make you feel like, oh, I'm so bad. Because I've actually been there. You know, when I was actually falling, even NK, like, he can, oh, he, he knows Andrique. that this is very true. I came to him and I was crying. crying I, I, <laughs> I was crying. I said, I, I don't feel I love God. Like, I was in a place where I know the word. Like, I know mm-hmm. that, you know, the enemy comes to kill, still and destroy. I know that the enemy will trick you, will say all these things. But I genuinely felt so stuck in the sin that i felt like i don't even love god i was crying you know nk was here to intercede like he prayed oh, for me like it's a brother it's a By brother grace, of <laughs> but do you know what i mean like it's not enough to just cry about it because i've been mm. there just crying about it but not doing anything about it that's why i also want to talk about being accountable mm-hmm. because i feel like with me even me being on this platform talking about openly saying what i struggled with Hey, it, it, w- it wasn't easy. Do you know what I mean? And it's like... <laughs> we lamented and debated about this. Aish! <laughs> by the grace of God. Honestly, I said, NK, no, <laughs> should I? No, <laughs> I, I, I was like, no, because... Do you know what it is? Even me telling my friends was scary to me. And, you know, I realised that it's not me that lives anymore. I am crucified with Christ. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. I, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I need to realise that it's no longer me. Do you know what I mean? It's no longer what I want. I need to submit myself to God. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 And I just want to add, you know, people that struggle with, especially like sleeping around and like, sleeping with girls, it's hard. You feel me? Because I've been there as well. You feel me? It's very, very hard. But you have to realize that, you know, when you have sex with somebody, especially it's not in the realms of marriage, mm-hmm. the person that's at the altar is the devil. Yeah. Wow. And you realize that, that when you leave wow. and you go and have sex with somebody you're joined together now you want to stop you want to stop fornicating however your flesh because it's joined with the person that you had sex with or who how much ever people you've had sex with you know it's hard for you to stop do you get it you 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 fast you fast you pray and it's still hard it's still hard but one thing i was i was at um i think called canonance last week tuesday and they were telling me that you make a list of every single person that you've slept with. I can't lie. Just be, so let's be very, very serious right now. You make a list, then you pray for every single, what do you call it? Co- co- what's it? What's the thing? Covenant. For every single covenant that you, um, you've um you done in a spiritual realm to be broken. And then by the grace of God, you'll be set free. And it's been working for me, you feel me? Because, you know, Charlie, when, I, when, he, when he was preaching, I was thinking, damn. Damn, because sometimes, bro, I'm telling you, I'll be there. I'm playing games, and then you know, hey. the visions of there. God, da, 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 da. It's coming, it's coming, but then you have to cast their imaginations. But yeah, literally, to write a list and you know break every single covenant and yeah. be like, I stand before you, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. I pray that your blood will wash every yes, single Lord. thing that I've done, oh Lord. Every person that I've had, you know, intercourse with, oh Lord, may the covenant be broken in the name of Jesus. I surrender my body to you, oh Lord. As a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. And you just you use the, the scriptures, you know, and the grace of God and then you just pray about it. And I'm, I'm telling you, in Jesus' name, you'll be free from it. Amen. You're free from it. Just claim it. Just pray. Claim it through prayer. You are free. What you just said is powerful. You're free from it. You're free from it. You're free from it. Just claim. Literally, you're free from everything that you struggle with. Why? Because Christ was free from it. Christ freed us from it. So you just have to claim it and live. You have to accept it. Accept it. It's there. It's just there for grabs. Grab it. I grab it. Drink calm. Drink calm. Drink calm. But no, literally, um, 
I got carried away. I forgot that I was talking about um, being accountable. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was easier, like it was harder for me to stop mm. that sin when I wasn't accountable because it's only now me and God that I'm, uh, that I'm accountable with. Like obviously mm -hmm. God knows that I'm falling this, I repent. But then I'm, I, don't, I haven't told anyone about it. I'm not saying now you should go and tell, you know, one million people. Don't go and slap in a group chat, please. I had sex today. Mercy in your youth group chat. <laughs> like, it's not a thing where you need to now tell everyone your business. But there's always that, that one person, even if it's one person that you feel like, okay, I'm going to tell you about this so that you can be accountable. So now they can come and help you. You know, whenever you feel tempted, you know, maybe at the beginning times you call them, can we pray, please? You know what I mean? Can can we pray, please? Or can we fast together? Literally, the Bible says the fervent prayer of a righteous, righteous man availeth much. Confess your sins to one another. Hey, it's confess true. The Bible says it, like it's plain. You, you confess your sins right. to um your friends, especially. Right. I'm not saying the friends that you know they're in Christ, they're not in yeah. Christ. I'm saying yeah. people who are stronger than you, because right. you realize that the de the demons they're gonna get seven stronger spirits oh, to come. God. So you need to be around seven stronger oh, Christians. God. Obviously, you don't need to tell all seven of them, but you know have somebody. And plus, I, I believe in every church, well, most churches there's a shepherd. You, you should have yeah. a shepherd there. Yeah. You know, sh she or he will hold you accountable. Yeah. Talk to him. The Bible says that I've given you shepherds, pastors yeah. after my own hearts, yeah. who will um, feed you with knowledge and understanding. So literally. So yeah. important to tell someone, like holding it in and also don't feel prideful. Because hey. I feel like reasons why I was so scared to tell people is because it's like, hey. if they find out, they think Charlie, this girl, that's it. Charlie, the Bible literally says in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. Do you get it? When you're around people who are able to build you up, yeah. encourage you, advise you, yeah. admonish you, oh. Charlie, there's safety. I'm telling you, because I've been there before. I'll be, I'll have Christian friends who, you know, they give me good advice, but their lifestyle don't really, you feel, match up. So it's like, you're both slight in and out. Mm -hmm. But when you have Christians, you are very, very strict on it. You yourself, you become strict on your soul by yeah. the grace of God. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Like, you know when the thought comes, I feel like, like because it's not actually a sin to be tempted, it's the sin when you fall into the temptation. Because, you know, as you said, Jesus was tempted, mm -hmm. you know, but he used the word of God. Mm -hmm. And by that, you know, he didn't fall into temptation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when temptation comes, a lot of us ponder on the thought. So now we're like thinking, weighing up the things. Okay, should I do it? Okay, yeah, I'm going to just do it for this last time. Yeah, if I do this, yeah, you know, I'm going to repent. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you're already thinking, pre-thinking, okay, I'm just going to do it and repent. Hey, what if you're you're doing it right then and, and Jesus comes? Hey, where's the repentance? <laughs> it's like, you, I just feel like the worst thing to do is kind of way, yeah, and be like, okay, if I do it now, it's fine. This is the last time for the whole the month. Guilty, kind of no, like, honestly, guilty, I'm, I'm not, literally, so am I. And the thing is, when you start weighing it up and kind of, debating that's the word i want debating whether you should or not mm. the enemy hey you don't know it, it says he's cunning do you know what i mean so when you're here debating should i do it he's gonna keep putting thoughts why you should and then next minute you fell no you need to actually as soon as you get the thought rebuke it in the yeah right it says cast down e everything and make it obedient to christ anything that exalts itself above christ make it obedient to him like mm -hmm. you need to acknowledge that Christ has a victory. You have the victory because you're in Christ. So now every thought that comes, actually rebuke it straight away. Don't now ponder on the thought and be like, mm, should I do it? No, rebuke it. Say, I rebuke you, Satan. Even get up, blast in tongues. <laughs> like, just pray and rebuke it because honestly, it makes a and difference. And literally, like, your atmosphere. Please, guys, it's important you control your atmosphere. Do you get it? The more you have on gospel preaching, the more you're going to be influenced. The Bible says if you sow in the spirit, you reap in the spirit. If you sow in your flesh, you reap in the flesh. The more you're listening to worldly music, the more you're sowing into your, your flesh. That's the truth. Do you get it? So, you know, when you're when you're just around and you're not really doing anything, slap on preaching or slap on gospel. Do you get it? Yeah. Try and read your Bible as well. Do you get it? Because I'm telling you, your company or your atmosphere that you set when you're by yourself, because the devil comes to you when you're by yourself, no one is there, you're are not at home, you're in your university dorm, then whilst you're listening to Caesar, you're listening to some that walk us, go to that boy's house, do you feel me? And then boom, you see yourself, you just fall, so just be very careful, you know, set the atmosphere, mm. set the right tone, you know, yeah. and be, the Bible says be spiritually minded, you feel me? Mm. To be spiritually minded is life and to be calm minded it's as well. death. So, literally, man. You know what, like, one thing for me is that 
deleting like for example twitter deleting that it, it didn't work for me like i would delete it yeah but next time i'm gonna get it you, I'm, you gotta download it <laughs> again. so i feel like we need to give them like active steps to be honest like reddit reddit is a dangerous place we cannot man them we can all agree i'm talking to that about them reddit is dangerous you know but just me delete it i've deleted it you get it i can't lie I delete it and then like I said, the more you renew your mind, the more you, like you, you obviously it will come to your mind sometimes, isn't it? But as you continue to build up the desire for God, yeah. as you continue to renew your mind, as you continue to pray, like prayer changes everything. Jesus literally said to disciples, pray lest ye fall into temptation. He said to Peter, I've prayed for you, for the devil has desired to sift you like wheat. So the devil's plan for you is to make you dry. The word of God, he doesn't want the word of God to be inside of you. Do you get it? Pray for your friends. Pray for yourself. Pray every single time. Pray, 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 pray. Do you get it? Pray that God will lead you not into temptation, but deliver you from evil. Do you get it? Prayer, I'm telling you, is one of the biggest differences. And also, obviously, reading your Bible. When you're reading your Bible, I don't mean verse of the day. Obviously, verse of the day is good. <laughs> you know, it sometimes like you just read verse of the day. You and you go on Snapchat, and you're on Snapchat for 10 and hours of the day. And you, you screenshot it. You put and post on your story, be like, yes, I've done my no, quiet no, time. No. No, no, no. Read it. See how you can, you know, implement in your life. Meditate on it. Don't only be hearers it. of the and word, but doers. Eat. Exactly. Be doers of the word and, and listen to preaching. Listen. Faith cometh by hearing. And, and hearing, hearing the word of God. You get it. See, it says hearing and no. hearing. And And hearing. Yeah. Let them who have ears, let them what? listen. Let them hear, Charlie. It's hearing and hearing. You need to actually feed yourself. And you know why I said deleting Twitter didn't work for me is because, like, just deleting isn't enough. Yeah. You, yeah. You're going to you're gonna download it again if you haven't done these steps. Like NK mm -hmm. saying fasting, prayer, you know, the word. If you haven't actually done these steps and you just delete it, it's not enough at all. Because now the next time you feel tempted, oh, let me just download it. It takes, what, like 10 seconds to download. It's day or again. Mm -hmm. You need to actually suck in, suck in the word. Suck in the word, honestly. Let it actually dwell in you. Let Christ dwell in you, yep. honestly. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, like, is there any other things that you want to share? Like, like if, if you... If you feel like you, you've gone too far from God, just know that you're not too far from God. You realize that, you know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. You know, God loves you. Jesus came to come and seek and save the lost. Do you get it? You know, you can get lost in sin. You feel me? You don't even know where to go. You don't know who to cry out to. But Jesus is always calling us to come back to him. You feel me? You know, Paul said that I may know him. You realize that you can't know enough about Jesus. There's always more. There's always more. The Bible says that Paul knew about the third heaven. I, I want to get there. That's what Apostle Paul had. Hey, the guy met the revelation of Christ physically. Wow. Hey. Yeah. So you realize that, Charlie, just keep building your relationship with God. Your company matters. I'm telling you guys, your company matters. Mm -hmm. You have to have Christian friends. It's a must. The Bible says, I ain't sharpen if iron. You get it. You can't, don't be that guy who's like, oh, okay, cool, I'm going to stay in this group chat. They're sending people, they're sending videos of them having sex. They're, they're sending girls to the group chat, which one they can G, you're in there because you feel like, Charlie, that's the man them, it doesn't matter, it matters, I'm telling you. Whatever, you, the Bible said your, your eyes is the light onto your whole body, you, you get it. So you realize that whatever you see, Charlie, it sparks a thought or an emotion into your whole body. And whichever boy is, has caught you, that is not letting you go, my, my friend, my sis, please, let's go, let's go, cut it off. You know, it's nearly a new year. You know, desire to have a, a, a very strong relationship with God next year. Because I feel like, you know, this generation, especially all of us, we can talk a lot about God. We can really be passionate about God. But if there's no fruits, you know. No, it's if, true. If you no, shall know them by their fruits. If, if there's no fruits, there's no, you know, there's no, there's a point. But, you know, it's, it's some way, you feel me? So just give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to the right company. She gets it. And the girl, the boy that you're speaking to that is not a Christian, that if you think is working, it's not going to work. At all, pa. It's not going to work. Not you, uniquely you York. Do you get it? Amos 3-3. Free free. How can two work together unless they agreed? Do you get it? So, Charlie, all of these things, you realize that the devil puts any, any dose of opportunities into your life to make you fall, to make you stop believing. But like I said, God loves you. Nothing can separate us. From the love of God. God. Nothing, 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 nothing. And we also have to think about what it is that we feel like God cannot feel that we're trying to seek in what, you know, we're being tempted by. Because mm -hmm. it's like, for example, with fornication, maybe they're like, oh, you know, they want to feel a void that they're feeling. Mm. You know, that's why they want to go and mm. fornicate. But God 
can offer you so much so more, more, you know? More. And even us sharing this today is we're not here to be like, oh yeah, like we're temptation free. No. Like it's not a thing. I <laughs> the temptation gets worse. <laughs> Just remember, listen, when God wants to use you, the devil will come at you from every aspect. Look at Job. Hey, the way the devil finished Job. He wanted to, hey, the way the, the devil sent his friends, killed his wife. His wife even said, curse God and die. She wanted a new husband, I know that. But anyway, listen, the devil will come. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers and rulers of darkness. And remember, every time you overcome them, the evil spirit goes back and go and find seven more to come. Every single time. Just so, you're not strong enough. Yeah. It's Christ in you. Christ in Never you. be dependent on yourself and feel At like, all. because I haven't failed today, I'm not going to fall tomorrow. At all. Righteous man will fall seven times, will get back up. Thank you know what is very important is about us getting back up. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to be encouraged that, you know, may, you may have fallen, you may have fallen, but a righteous man will fall seven times and get back up. Amen. It's about you getting back up. Amen. You know, you can fall hard. Just get back up. Get back up. Continue to look onto Christ, the author and finish. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the perfecter of all faith. Amen. 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 I mean, wow, what an episode. Charlie. What an episode. Thank God. We honestly praise God. God. Honestly, guys. I, I really hope you guys were blessed by this. Amen. I hope that by the grace of God, someone will be set free from, you know, the words that we have spoken. If you need advice, please don't you don't should shout Didi. Yeah, all, you, all, all, all the people that are watching, make sure you, you know, DM her. You feel me? Any ask, any questions, DM her. Because Charlie, she's a blessed girl and she's really helped me my Christian. Hey man, stay with NK guys. I'm telling you, DM him. He will, like, the way in scripture, this guy grace. with scripture, car the most untouchable. But yeah, guys, just continue to strive, continue to push, continue to fix your eyes on Jesus, continue to keep the word inside of Amen. you. And I pray that, you know, like it says his words are spirit and life. Amen. So as you, you go into his word, you read his word, mm -hmm. I pray that you'll be set free Amen. from anything that you may be Jesus struggling with name. in Jesus name. Amen. But yeah, guys, Amen. that has been, you know, today's Ooh. episode about temptation. Guys, today was a deep one, honestly. Like I, I'm sat here like, Hey, when I'm Please. editing this, kind of boast, but... My mom sees this. Lord, have mercy upon us. Honestly, yeah. you know, that's what I'm thinking about my parents. Uh, <laughs> but it's well done. It is well. It's well. I'm changed in Christ. In I'm free in Christ. Amen. And I pray that you two will be free. Mm -hmm. But yeah, guys, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Subscribe to NK, guys. Tell this guy to get active. 2023 is going to come with bangers yeah, and bangers man, only. Man, man, by the grace man, of God. Man. And, you know, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you know, continue to stream. I don't know what you can do on there. Follow me or something. I, mean, I, don't, I don't even know about this stuff. <laughs> follow, please, follow. Follow, follow me, please. Follow me, please. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this has been the Called Out Podcast, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Ooh. And we are out. Bye.